Thank you. Thank you all of you for joining in today on a Sunday afternoon. My name is Anuradha Rora and I'm a drama educator, founder of iExpress Academy into speech and drama. And I keep going to and forth from being an entrepreneur to being an educator to being, you know, the we don so many different hats, being into the performing arts space. Um, recently, I completed my diploma in using theater for social change uh, through Imagine Action California and which actually made me very um, interested in understanding how do we use, although we do use a lot of stories and drama in a classroom and we do, you keep doing work for the communities, but why? Why are we doing so is the question which Often I used to, you know, it used to make me curious. Why just this and why not something else? And that is the question which probably I want to ask all of you. Why drama or why theater to build a community? Anybody who would like to unmute and answer? Yes, yes, Meena Ji. I think foremost, it releases your built up energy and any emotions. So it's right. a passageway to <laughs> let loose. And uh, if you start it with the uh, seniors, mm. then it's a way to rejuvenate. And it's an activity people do together. So whenever people do something together, they, um, you know, they, they, they bond at the same time. Correct. Thank you so much, Eric and Veena Ji. It is... Yes, so theater uh, for community now more than ever because we are seeing the abrupt climatic changes. We are seeing the wars. Our children are seeing the uncertainty now more than ever. When I was a child and I was growing up, I probably did not hear so much or did not witness so much of a climatic change. If summers used to start by April, it used to always start by April. I never saw the weather changing so much what we are witnessing today. And with so much of uncertainty, especially in children, of course, in adults too, there is a lot of anxiety. And all that anxiety is getting trapped into our body and a very, uh, I would say, in a very detailed way, uh, there is a book called Your Body Keeps the Score. If anyone has heard about it or know, knows about it, your body, your muscle memory, everything is keeping a score of all the traumas, all the anxieties that we are going through. So how do we unleash that? And how do we work on that? And that is through theater. And since we are going to talk about drama and theater, I am going to start with an activity with all of you. And are you ready? Yes. Yes, thank you. By any chance, do you have a book, notebook, anything near you? Uh, something which you can use to yes. cover your face. Okay. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask some sociometric questions. Uh, if the answer holds a, tr a yes, if the answer is yes for you, you will remove the book from your face and you'll show us the face. If the answer is no, you can keep hiding your face. And if the answer is maybe, I don't know, somewhere there, then, you know, you can show half your face and hide half of it. Are we good with this? Yes. Okay. So the first question, how many of you love rains? Okay. And we can look at uh, the windows. We can look at all the windows, but we are not going to judge anybody say, oh, she doesn't like rain. Oh, okay. So that, we are, that is something that we are not going to do. We will just accept the answers for everybody and accept their liking and dislike. So a next question. Okay, cover your face. Cover your face, everybody. Cover your face. The next question is, how many of you have been to Mumbai at least once in your lifetime? Okay, almost everybody. Not bad. Next question. How many of you... Love eating roadside food like Pani Puri, Golgappa, whatever it is called, or the chart. So we, we take the book away if the answer is yes? 
if the answer is yes you remove the book you show the full face if it is no you keep it covered if it is little bit then you keep mm -hmm. half of it you show the half of it okay mm -hmm. so yeah i am okay i see a lot of all right next next question how many of us have failed sometime in our life in doing something okay last question how many of you have eaten your lunch and are attending this workshop? Okay, thank you. Priyanka, looks like you need to grab some food. All That's right. True. What was um, now reflection time? Because any activity needs reflection. And what, what did we learn from this simple sociometric game? Yeah. Yes, Priyanka. Yeah, Anuradha, this game is always fascinating to see the commonalities and the differences in yeah. the group uh, because commonality is what brings us together and makes us a community. At the yeah. same time, differences is what uh, brings our unique, uh, not selling point, but unique pointers, which makes us unique human beings. So, both are important at the same time. And this is a one unique game amongst many that brings both together. Correct. Thank you so much for sharing. This game can be played as an icebreaker for the group to bond in communities for people to know about each other. For example, I got to know that Prenka has not had lunch. And if we were in a physical space, I probably would have offered her some food. Or... Uh, you know, vice versa, something like that. So we also understand in the setup through a simple game. And this is the most basic game that you can play that how we know about the likes and dislikes and commonalities as Priyanka rightly said. Something else that I often play with children is I draw an imaginary line in the classroom. And I tell the children, cross the line if you have not taken a bath today in the morning. Cross the line if you have scored less than five marks. Cross the line if you have scored more than eight marks or whatever you're trying to achieve. And this cross the line game, when children go and cross the line and they realize they are not alone. It is not just them who is struggling through various things. Cross the line if you have ever felt sad and then suddenly they say all oh, the 30 of them crossing the line together. And, you know, how often do, when I feel sad, I feel, oh, it's just me. And it's just me. And and when I see suddenly the entire class walking with me, I realize it's just not me. It's everybody along. And I'm not the only one. So it brings, it brings the community together. So theater has been a vibrant form of artistic expression. And for centuries, not from now, and it captivates, captivates audiences and transports them into this different world, just which is beyond just entertainment. Right. So we are going to understand the value of theater for building communities and not using theater just for entertainment purposes. We are going to see how theater plays a important role in shaping communities and fostering social bonds. Eric, uh, if you can kindly share the presentation. Thank you. While Eric is sharing this presentation, we can just warm up a little bit. And we will use our right hand and move it in circular motion. Clockwise, anti-clockwise, anything is okay. Five, four, three, two one and then left hand five four three two one we can do with our legs just rotate them the right leg wherever you're sitting unless you're on a bed even if you're on a bed you just move your leg on five four three two one and then the left leg five four three two one 
Thank you so much, everybody. Just a quick body warm up is very important to bring you back. It brings your attention back. I think I need not speak a lot on it. We all know the importance of these body warm ups. Why theater was my question to all of you. And Avina and Eric did answer that question. And what benefits? What, how is it important? What are we getting from theater? So we are building community connections. We are cultivating creativity and self-expression. We are also promoting cultural diversity. Now, how do I do that? Promote cultural diversity through theater. Right? So there are a lot of drama games. And this is when an entire platter of drama games come into picture. When I talk about it could be an improvisation, role play, mime, tableau, anything that suits the audience, the target audience of your classroom or your community, wherever you're conducting these sessions. And I'm going to talk about a simple role-playing activity. If I can get two volunteers, please. Anybody, you can raise your hands and volunteer for the same, for this small role-play activity. Anyone who would like to do that? Yeah, okay, Veena, one, Eric, thank you. Eric and Veena Ji, what we are going to do is we will... I'm going to give I'm going to give you an occupation and both of you can unmute yourselves and you're going to you're going to dis, you're going to talk as if you're in that occupation and talking to somebody okay. uh, Eric you can be a doctor and Veena G uh, and say a dentist to be more precise and Veena G you have a toothache Okay, so let's let's start. Let's witness them. Okay, uh, um, ma'am, uh, what what brings you to my dentist office today? Uh, Eric, the right side, the cheek, even down all the way to the neck, it's hurting. Oof. Okay, uh, uh, we need to do an that... X-ray, and I'm sure we can take care of this. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Will I be okay by tomorrow morning? Actually, by the evening, there's a very special program on Eric's platform that I need to attend, and I can't be pushing this. Okay, well, let's do an X-ray so we can really right see now. what's going on there, and then and then we'll we'll move as quick as possible. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was great. Uh, at the same, so this real role playing thing, we can also give different status of the society. To the people so somebody can be you know uh, any one of you any one of the participants can be someone who doesn't have a roof on his or her head and the other one can be somewhere who is living in a lavish house a single person staying in a lavish house has all the luxuries so when you give these status statuses or different occupations or different cultures when you talk about here if I'm talking about social studies or history, I probably could make Eric a pharaoh and I could make Veena Ji a priest. And we can talk about from that era. Right? And we can bring a cultural diversity by also giving different cultures. I am a Sindhi. Veena Ji, you are a Marathi. Okay. And we are celebrating our own festivals on the same day. And we can exchange about what we do. So what happens when you do it through playing games, it energizes the group and kinds of creates a sense of intimacy and camaraderie because they often say that you know about a person a lot more in the 15 minutes of play than you know the person in the entire lifetime. Right? And I worked with various schools and I see that the minute I talk about Activity, activity, and I have everybody, the entire class goes spin drop. Silence. And if I'm just doing what I'm doing right now, if I'm giving them a lecture, then, then they are distracted, they are diverted. And, uh, and that's why play is so important to build communities. And Eric, we will go to the presentation. 
because I'm going to talk about a very important aspect of of the game or of drama. Yes, please scroll further down. Yes, so this is these are the questions I think I want to ask everybody. Have you ever considered using theater as a tool for community change? And around the world, theater is being picked up as an innovative and effective way to open up dialogue, tell stories, and deepen connections yeah. between individuals yeah. who are working together to face some yeah. of the most pressing problems. I think yesterday and day before, David was talking about uh, using, po using poems for Gaza children. And... And he spoke about how people from different cultures and different religions and different countries are using the poem and how that is then creating a community. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Eric. We can go further down. And I spoke about this, that building community through theater, what are the important purposes it will serve? the cultural expression, empathy and understanding, personal growth, critical disclosure. And why uh, why empathy and understanding? We all know the importance. None of us want sympathy. We definitely understand the value of being empathetic. Uh, thank you, Eric. We'll, we'll not spend a lot of time here. We'll Go down. Yes, this is something that I want to ask each one of you. Any issue or any concerns that you or your community would like to work on using applied theater, a glow, cull, local and global, any issue. Anything coming to your mind, like Gaza definitely is one genocide, Gaza, which we keep talking about. Yes, yes. I may be talking a lot. I hope the other participants, Priyanka, Manisha, also take up some some <laughs> act, active role. Uh, yes. I don't know the others, uh, so I'm, I'm pointing out to Priyanka and Manisha. But I know that um, children, because I work with government school children, I often tell them, don't throw rubbish on the road. And yeah. right in front of our house, um, you anywhere in fact you right. need a packet of chips and of course the packet is just thrown there so mm. this i find is very irritating and children need to know if they clean up their house it doesn't mean that they uh, spitting on the road is another thing i'm not getting into the rest of it right this the common civic sense which is definitely lacking and hygiene uh, thank you so much Fina, manisha Franka. anybody else who would like to talk about any Local concerns or global concerns that you would like to? Yes, Manisha. Hi. Uh, hi. Good to see you here and everyone else too. Thank uh, you. I, for me, you know, like uh, I have, uh, I deal with many parents who always come across that my child is addicted to a tab or a technology. Mm. Now, mm. There are many ways in which, you know, each of us are trying, you know, inculcating re reading habits and, but uh, never, nonetheless, after COVID, this has increased, increased for worst. And right. still, I think it, it all comes by monkey see, monkey do. We know that, you know, what parents do at home, <laughs> our children mostly imitate them. But again, I think this is now, from a local perspective, this is now getting a, you know, a global uh, scale. It is increasing quite a lot, no matter how, how well you handle it or no. So I, for me, I think that is a you know, one issue. If could be, right. I would be really interested to apply theater to that. Yeah, thank you so much. And what are the different modalities that you can apply? You can probably do a role play in the classroom. You can also do a mind. So I'll just give you a quick, uh, quick suggestion or something that I did in my classroom about this issue. So we created an entire drama. If everybody is okay, if you don't mind me talking about this exercise that I did uh, using a mime. So what we did is using mime where none of them can talk and only act. Using mime, um, the children were portraying that there's a patient who is undergoing a surgery, a stomach 
surgery and the doctor is constantly using the phone because the phone constantly keeps ringing even for the doctors right and and all all this is happening through the mind and the doctor forgets the phone inside the patient's stomach and sews the patient up and then through through mime the child is showing that the child is vibrating and the doctor is looking all around where is my phone where is my phone and figures out oh no it is still so it was just a funny humorous way of portraying how hazardous it could be and you can come up with your own creative ideas and uh, and you know a lot of children then whose parents were doctors they said today we are going home and we are telling our mom and dad not to use the phone in the operation theater at least yeah so there are various various way freezing frames tableaus role play activities uh if if you are using freezing frames you can talk you know you can show different situations and we can do one freezing frame activity right now over here so all of us will i invite all of you to become any one character any one character who's talking over the phone and enters the classroom and freeze when i say freeze you freeze okay we're talking on the phone and we're, we're talking on the character phone. in the character we have to make up the character you have to make up a character you can be anybody oh i have to pick up my son from the class what time oh no 6 o'clock please veena please Thank you. Ease. Unlock. Thank you so much. So here, I anything that you want to discuss, any idea that you want to discuss, you can do it through a freeze frame. We can become a character in the garden. So example, we are in a garden, and there's a bench, and let's say I am the bench in the garden, and whatever you have to do, you have to do around this bench. you have to become different characters a tree a dog a child a ball whatever and you have to be around the bench and freeze so i am the bench in the garden okay manisha is the bird freeze manisha veena ji is the ant is that an ant caterpillar release thank you this is a very small part of a uh, forum theater image theater freeze frames we can use a uh, freeze frames for a lot of situations and you can work on your issues right eric thank you so much can we go back to the presentation A dragon dreaming is is a technique, or I would rather say it's a project, which was first developed by John Croft and his late wife Vivian Alanta, while both of them were working for Western Australian foundation that they co-founded. It is inspired by social and environmental activism, and if you search about dragon dreaming, you will see the wonderful work work that. these guys have done and all the wonderful um i would say techniques that they have come up with to include theater for community building yeah so what they do is they also use a lot of uh, wisdom from indigenous cultures and australian aborigines uh, eric can we go on the next page uh, there is a design process that they follow yes thank you so this uh this design process talks about 
so their whole uh the whole work of for can you all hear me well suddenly yes. i can't see anybody we can hear you okay great 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 so what uh, what is the philosophy of dragon dreaming they say that it uh, draws upon the indigenous wisdom of the uh, western australian aborigines and is based on three equally important objectives personal growth community building and service to the earth and i think this is this is exactly what we all wish to do right we all want to see our growth while we also serve the community and work with the community and we give back something to our mother earth right so this philosophy these th th these three objectives are very well achieved through this design process i will not go a lot into this design process but i will talk uh, slightly on the dreaming planning doing and celebrating part and it says that this this wheel or this entire process is like between an individual so between us and our environment right and it says that uh, so there are four quadrants if you see and that every project shows dreaming planning doing celebrating so every project that is ever done starts with the dream of an individual person and i think we all agree with that right we all are here because we dreamt of using drama or storytelling of eric's dream of chennai storytelling festival everything starts with the dream of an individual person and after that individual person uh, it is then enriched by a collective intelligence and it becomes the dream of the whole team so everybody works together to achieve the dream of that one individual and the goal hereby is to make that the 100% of all the dreams come true and there is no compromise the chennai storytelling festival we are not doing any compromises planning the huge mammoth task the dream stage is about diversity and gathering as many ideas as possible and then we focus on the planning stage so focusing distilling and filtering and we define objectives here and we define the goals and take the very first step the necessary step for organizing tasks giving the responsibility delegating time budget everything so everything comes into the planning the third quadrant who will do the work very important right and doing is the most important administration manager management monitoring progress everything happens in the doing whatever we have spoken about last celebrating and often i have heard that a person who doesn't celebrate the day by the end of the night is not a wise one so the importance of celebration is it's that this project which was an individual's dream has become like a community thing a team is working towards it and it can be a noisy extroverted celebration or it can be a ref quiet reflection introspection gratitude recognition anything but you celebrate the entire process right so this design process is something if you go if you go on their website if you search about dragon dreaming you will find a lot of data and you would know on how they have come to this design process and how you can use it in your everyday classrooms or communities or wherever you are working right. so now this brings me to another drama game which i'm going to talk about and which is win win game and it's not the win lose culture so we are not talking about you win some i win some we are saying everybody wins okay because we are talking about the community as a whole so for example in a classroom and i'm just going to take a classroom example in a classroom how many of you have played the game of go and find an object green in color red in color orange in color right and what happens when somebody is unable to find 
something green or something red, the child used to get eliminated. When I was a young girl, we used to play this game in our uh, society and we, ha we had to go find touch a silver car, a red car or a green something and green grass, all of that. And then if you are unable to find something of that color, you're out. Okay. But when I was a child, we were given a chance. Whoever is out is now going to say which go and find another color. We were not told to go stand in one corner. You're out. You can't play anymore. So everybody wanted to get out. You know, because we all wanted a chance to say, no, now go and find something which is purple in color or something which is this color. So it is a win-win situation. I win and you win for communities, right? Okay. Uh, we are talking about the design process. So after dragon uh, dreaming, the design process, there are a few drama games which we can use in our classroom. One is, as I spoke about the imaginary line, the other drama game is bringing everybody together and give them levels. Okay, so if you're standing, that is one level. I, I, I know you can't see me. You are sitting down is another level and you're on your knees is third level. So three children and then you give them situations where any every child has to be in one of the levels and they can only stay in that level for 30 seconds. Okay, so what we do is, so we are, telling them we're giving them the space we are telling them about time we are, we, we're giving them we are giving them the idea of also the sometimes about the social status for example let's create a game where if i am standing and we can just pretend to be uh, kneeling down or being on the chair sitting down and let's create a scene from a temple And anybody can go next. So what will you do if you're sitting down, Manisha? Reading a book, uh, reading a, you know, chant. Yeah. So can you pretend doing that? And anybody else who would like to go? Well, I only see few people on the camera. So do I stand or do I sit? Yeah, sitting only right now because we won't be able to see you if you okay. stand. Okay, I'm doing my jap mala. Yeah. Okay, and within 30 seconds you have to change. So if I had become the deity, I can suddenly become a devotee in the next 30 seconds. Okay, so you keep shifting. And what are you doing? You're teaching different roles in the community people take through a very simple game. And when you give them levels, it becomes interesting because everybody then gets to understand, oh, if I'm a deity, I would be like this. If I'm a powerful man, if I'm the king, I'm like this. If I'm in, if I'm a humble servant, I'm like this. So you're talking about body language, you're introducing posture, you're introducing status, you're introducing a lot of things, whatever you wish to do through a simple game. Eric, can we please go on the presentation? Thank you. Yeah, so drama games. Um, this is my favorite part which says the social arts wheel anybody who is understanding something from this image what's happening 
let's just take two minutes and go through it. Okay, where are the arrows? There are like two uh, two concepts or two wheels, isn't mm -hmm. it? One with a yeah. center. One is the outer and one is the inner. Yes. The self, mind, earth, body is the inner one. So unless the self sees and tells the mind to say something and then you have to do it or something like that. Hmm. And the outer one is to engage um, others uh, around you too. I don't know. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yes, Priyanka. Yes, uh, Anuradha, I think <clears throat> this is another version of uh, the earlier will that we saw. Um, and over here, like how I think of hmm. uh, this particular one is... Um, uh, mm -hmm. everything has uh, four steps like you mentioned uh, decide or define then comes plan or strategize then comes execute or implementation and then finally to go in the next cycle we have to do a celebration or documentation or archival of the story that fits into the next cycle of so similarly over here if we see first we see what what are the problems around us what is the beauty and what is the things that are you know not so much beautiful where we see issues where we see concern <laughs> say we talk about men menstrual hygiene there's no mm. awareness so mm. we talk about uh, gender-based violence we talk about uh, climate change so uh, where earth is beautiful where communities and families are beautiful at the same time there are problems inside us so we see we see the problems we identify we define and then we say we utter we plan we strategize what are we going to do about it but still now we haven't moved into the doing phase right. uh, but finally then now comes our because still now it was here and here Hmm. But now comes our time of final execution or implementation. So we come hmm. into the doing phase where myself is going to interact with the earth for the first time. And hmm. we we start the implementation. And then once again, whatever we have done, we need to tell it to ourselves as a positive hmm. affirmation what worked. A uh, few negative things as a constructive feedback. And also to the world, um, by means of documentation or archival so that we want so that builds up our story the moment we were in the doing phase we were working for social justice but once doing is done then we are building up the story that we are going to tell ourselves to the world and to the next generation uh, that they are going to take up as a learning right thank you so much Prenka. so what uh all of you saying is, of course, there is no right and wrong. This is our understanding of this social arts wheel. And I am, I did not say, I did not get the theater of the oppressed or Augusto Bowles work over here because I wanted to say that any art form uh, is going to help you build a community, whether it is poetry, whether it is painting, it's music, it's dance, all stir up our emotions. Yes. And when everything is stirring up our emotions, all the arts move people powerfully. And they can strongly influence our behavior and even our character, right? For uh, for the, uh, so what I can say is that, sorry, one second, my phone is still ringing. All the arts move people powerfully, I was saying, and they can strongly influence our behavior. And for that reason, uh, you know, everything that you're seeing here, is working towards seeing the beauty of it. The mind has to approve of it. You have to come back. You have to make a connection with the earth. When you are doing something, it has to be justice to self. Right? Because 
whatever work you have seen. So how the plateau would have said it, he said that the art works as shadows on the wall of the cave. And rather than shining symbols of the true spiritual word outside, the answer is that you see both the potential. So you say that perhaps there's a bit of sympathy for the devil is also possible. Yeah. And whatever work we are doing today for theater, uh, for communities through theater, if the children understand this, if we start nurturing them from a younger age, that it is a win-win. And I have to include, as Reena ji, I, I read the, I didn't see the chat, but I think I just saw the word inclusivity. If we make them inclusive, if we tell them that, you know, you need to work on your personal growth, but you also need to work on the community and you need to serve to the earth. And then I think we will have very successful individuals. I'm going to show uh, a very uh, a YouTube video of the work that we are going to do next. Yes, because uh, I would be conducting this session till four o'clock and then I, we will have an activity where Eric would be taking over. And what we are going to do is we are going to read a poem together and work on it. Okay. But before we read that poem, I'm going to show you the story behind it. I've put the link of it in the chat. I'm sorry, Eric, I forgot to share it with you. That's okay. And can we... One second. Can I? Sh is it possible for me to share? Do I have the right? No, let let me do it. Yes, please. Thank you. Has anyone um, read this poem or know about this in the Flanders in Flanders field? Yeah. Do you work with it in your school or wherever? I have read it just once when I was in New Zealand. And mm -hmm. uh, some friends of mine, uh, they lost their grandfathers or something like that. And mm -hmm. because they were fighting in the, uh, with the British, in the British Army. And right. in New Zealand and Australia, they still um, celebrate this day. And uh, they wear poppies right. on their, uh, on their, yeah. Yes, thank you so much. So this uh, was written we saw the story of it for the world first world war in the memory of the people who died in the first world war you can work with children from grade eight onwards on this poem and you can bring in the you can bring in various cross curricular cross cultural diversity incorporation with this poem okay so how 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 do you do that i mean what do you do? Oh. So this is the poem. Thank you. And what do I say is that we'll divide you into a group or you can do an individual work. And then you can brainstorm on ways that you can explore this poem in your classes. And when you look at a poem through you can look at it through art, history, science, math, social studies, drama. And definitely don't reject any ideas because John McRae had rejected his poem altogether. But it's still living on today. So do not reject any ideas and make sure you uh, you enjoy to read up, read it up. And anyone who would like to recite this wonderful poem for people who have not read it before. Or I can go. Well, well. Shall one of us read it out loud? Is that what you're you're suggesting? Yes. If someone can read it out loud, or I can read it, Eric. Uh, Vina, you've raised your hand. Why don't you? Yes. The others are keeping very quiet, and I've finished my <laughs> cup of tea, so I've got <laughs> little energy. All right. In Flanders Fields by John McRae, 
In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row, row that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still braving singing, bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and we were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up a quarrel with the foe. To you from the failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep through poppies grow in Fanders fields. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Veena ji. Uh, I personally love this poem. And if you see, if you go through the history, if you play the YouTube videos, there are a lot of worksheets on this. And reading, uh, looking at this poem, what we are going to do, we can, uh, Eric, do we divide them into groups or? No, I suggest. Um, individual work? We just have a discussion here, or maybe we can invite people to write for a couple of minutes. Uh, uh, some thoughts about the, the poem. Uh, but you have to go in a, in a couple of minutes. Is that correct? Yes, I, I need to go in a couple of minutes, but that is okay. I'm just going to talk about any questions if anyone has or anything more that you want me to throw light on we had a we had very limited time and definitely we cannot talk about a very vast subject like theater in an hour to build communities right however what we can do is we can start by inclusivity in our classroom and we can say we are all together in this right the second great way to do is become using the teacher in role. When you become teacher in role, that is again a technique. And uh, yesterday Barry was talking about it. Uh, David was talking about it. With, with teacher in role, you become the character. For example, I can certainly be... <laughs> construction everywhere in Mumbai. <laughs> they have not left any road undug. <sighs> Do you have water nearby? <laughs> yes, Eric. Thank you. Good. I for that once I thought so that you, <laughs> yes, for once even I was thinking, oh God, Anuradha have some water. And then I, I'm looking at the clock. Oh, God, another three minutes. She's not going to talk. What are we going to do? <laughs> I think this was a brilliant workshop. I would like yes. to stay in touch with you, especially. Sure, Veena. Uh, yeah. Sure, Veena Ji. Yes. Um, I, I work with schools. I'm a teacher with Ara Vidya Mandir group of schools in Bombay. And I do teacher training for a lot of schools on using storytelling and drama in classroom. Uh, that was definitely not my idea when I was growing up. I I was not the odd one out in my family. I wanted to do my information technology and then do MBA and then find a job. But destiny had a different plan. And I think I'm so loving it. Yeah, I went on learning. And as I said, the recent diploma that I, uh, that I did, which was 75, almost 75 hours of learning uh, with Imagine Action, Imagine... Action California on using theater to bring a social change. And that is why, I, Eric, I suggested that we will do this session on how do we build communities through, through theater. Because it everything starts from nurturing early. We all talk about conditioning, training our minds and all of that. So we need to start conditioning everyone around us to believe in the power of performing arts and use performing arts because when you experience it it is only then you know what's happening yes 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 Veena go ahead I have a small question um, yeah. not everybody would like to participate including Correct. me I might be a bit shy especially in a big right. group Right. Um, 
what do we do with those kind of students generally i mean yesterday i had a class in my own um, house and mm-hmm. i know a boy who just doesn't like to do anything he just sits there but he he does sit in the corner and he's i'm sure I'm he's okay little... i'm okay with it but yes. uh, yeah if you need yeah. more and i'm it. sure that he is a very good listener whichever corner of the room he must be listening to you very nicely and you give him your time and space but we uh, uh, i usually do a lot of miming with such children mm-hmm. because words can actually be pressurizing mm-hmm. okay. mm-hmm. when you have to talk mm-hmm. it can become a little oh i should not go wrong am i using the correct sentence grammatical mistakes and errors and all of that so if you do a lot of mime with these children mm-hmm. they usually then build the confidence and their inhibitions shed away okay. yeah. good that is uh, that is one technique that i use in the classroom the other is i let them choose that take your time but tell me which character would you want to be and then devise an entire play around it because often children who are not speaking well so many times the children who don't raise their hands in the classrooms and then they say because i don't like what you were doing hmm. yep i like avengers you're not even talking about it <laughs> yes <laughs> you know and that's why now i've actually learned about the anime series about naruto about um, although i don't watch soccer but uh, the messi ronaldo fan club i need to follow because then only i can create a bond right there are there so many children who doesn't like who don't like what i'm doing otherwise good and thank you It was lovely, Anuradha. I loved it. I mean, I I think I'm going to take my, you know, because even I have a couple of students who just don't like to talk, and mm. their parents want that, you know, they don't talk. I make them talk, and I'm like, yes, but they listen. They respond right. when they want to. My, you know, my mm. stress is that that when I ask them questions, yes, they at least say something. only talking right. like you know as in a parent See, there's who... another thing manisha i'm sorry i'm interrupting you unfortunately we consider that the people who are talking are extrovert and and are confident which is actually i feel is not true because you can uh, not talk and still be very confident i agree i agree right. please they they talk and they are very thoughtful you know the ones yeah, who so don't talk so for somebody like me i need someone else to throw my ideas to i want to talk uh, for someone like my husband he will internally process it and then come he will come up with a genius idea which i could never think of right so then it is it is not that someone is lacking confidence so i think we also need to condition and train our parents on understanding that your child may not be talking but definitely doesn't lack confidence unless it is a definite case of low confidence or something so in any which ways in any scenarios miming works best the other thing which works is frozen frames okay because these are very small activities they just have to come and become whoa do this and then go away back to their place and p- pick their corner So they would like to do that they would like to come for a few seconds and become like this and then go back so freeze frames and mime is what i suggest um eric thank you so much for having me over thank you and what we'll yes. do is we will stop the recording now